the boars have not been out. Uh, they're too busy humping one another, so that's why they can't go out. They don't venture out anywhere. So having pigs in the woods this time of year is, is very beneficial for us. A, because they get a lot of mast, uh, but B, it just keeps from tearing up the grass, the, the pasture areas, the limited pasture areas that I have. But there are some issues, of course, with having pigs in the woods, specifically when it comes to the electric fence. And with today's task, I'm going to illustrate those issues that show up. So come along. So something that's necessary with having electric fence in the woods, of course, is doing a regular inspection to see what is impeding the uh, connectivity of the electric fence. Those of you new to the channel, uh, 100 acres, got about five acres of pig pasture that is mostly in the woods. So this morning I want to go investigate the boar pasture. It's been, um, been a couple weeks actually since I've ridden the perimeter to see exactly what's going on there. And uh, honestly, I had some friends up uh, last week. They were shooting, so I walked up there with them uh, to get them set up for shooting on the range and looked over and saw that I had some issues. So I thought, oh, it's time to do a ride. So since we're dealing with some distance and topography changes, that's why the side-by-side -side comes in so handy for me. So I'm going to show you the kit of things that I have to put together to uh, be able to cruise the fence, to be able to make any repairs that are necessary. So the thing I always have in my side-by-side -side is my toolbox. And this has a, a variety of basic hand tools, um, even thing, everything from a socket set to a little hand saw, screwdrivers, pliers, um, I think my chainsaw sharpener is in there, blah, 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 all kinds of stuff. The next thing that I'm going to require is, of course, my chainsaw. Because being in the woods, we don't know who's decided to fall across the, uh, the road or the wire, and we'll take that with us. Of course, gas and bar oil, just in case we need to re-top re off. Whew. Somebody needs to lighten the load on the kit. Okay, fence repair kit. So, whew, that's going to fall over. So I have this old roll of 17 gauge wire. It's basically where I was going around and reclaiming, redoing everything from 17 to 14, because 14, 17 stinks on ice. I still have a bunch of old amount of this, and I use it from time to time. And I'll show you areas where I do use it. The other thing, of course, T-post driver. We don't know if any of the T-posts have decided to give up the ghost. When a, when a big tree falls across some of those, it becomes an issue. I also have 14 gauge wire, which is what I would do any replacement with. And I have it on my handy dandy little wire roller that I made. So that keeps things in check. We'll stick that there for now. And then just my tote that has all the miscellaneous sundries in it. I have tubing for any runs that need to be insulated. And then just my various T-post clips. I've got screw-in post insulators. More screw-in corners, gate handles, blah, 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 blah. That fills that. I also have some self-tapping screws for those screw-in posts. So this makes up my kit. So if I'm cruising the fence in the side-by-side, -side, I should be able to do 95% uh, of the repairs that need to be done without having to get anything else out. It also happens to be feeding time. So we're going to kill the proverbial two birds with one stone. And we're going to load up our day's ration for both the boars, the sows, and now the piglets. There's one bucket. Dose buckets. This is our soaked and possibly fermented grain feed, conventional pig feed. I say possibly for a minute because the temperatures have been getting so low. It may not be fermenting as quickly. Do about a three day soak. 
And bucket three. All right. Let's make our rounds. Okay, so the first place we have to stop is down here. We're right at the workshop. And under a chicken brooder here is where I have the electric plugged in for the boar pasture. So you can see this nice line up here. That's where I walk into and electrify my forehead a lot. So we're going to unplug this guy. And what that does is it runs a high wire. There's two, there's two wires there. You can see a low wire and a high wire. The high wire is like almost like a, a transmission line, if you will. It goes all the way back. And I'll show you here on the map how far back we're going to the boar pasture. So I don't have electricity further up the valley, so that's why I have my energizer here. And, uh, and of course, this transmission wire that runs all the way back. So let's go back and check on them. Morning boys. <clears throat> so there's a, a huge tip I want to give you all if you're planning on running pigs in woodlot and especially if you're running pigs in woodlot with a lot of uneven terrain like we have. And that is, as you're laying out your pastures, your paddocks, whatever you want to call it in the woods, your lots, then make sure you can have your fence line alongside a roadway or a path, even if it means changing the overall layout of your paddock or pasture. In this situation here, this is what we've done for our boars, and we'll show you again on the map, you can see the overall size of the boar pastures broken into two paddocks. But there's a road that goes all the way around that entire perimeter. Now the elevation change is probably almost 80 feet with various undulations here and there. High side being on the north side, low side being uh, in the middle of the valley or the south side, the central part of the valley where I'm standing where the boars are eating. Uh, you can see that's where the stream is. The reason why, if you saw all the equipment that I packed in, it allows me to easily ride around and investigate. Because the last thing you want, of course, is fins down and pigs getting out. Now, those of you familiar with the channel, we know, you know that pigs getting out for us isn't a huge deal because there's just hundreds and hundreds of acres of nothing around us, so the pigs always come back. If I was butted up against somebody's prize rose farm or you know, a big crop farm, then that would be a big deal. And I definitely want my pigs getting out. But it's, it's best, and I try to do, investigate prior to pigs standing in the front yard. So just right here at the side-by-side -side where I was feeding the boars, I can do a visual inspection real quick of the fence. There's actually three things that I encountered uh, just right here before I even start to drive the perimeter. So let me show you. So come along this line that we've installed. The first thing that jumps out at me is this. Now this is a low spot. It's not because the fence has sagged or anything. It's because I knew I was going to have that low spot there, but installed anyway. When I moved the boards in here, they were smaller, and I really didn't worry about them jumping over that. But the problem has become now, as they've uprooted these areas, I want them to kill a lot of this vine that was growing in here. If they uprooted this and mounted this up, it's getting closer to where they're just going to step over that. I know it's kind of hard to gauge from that angle of the camera, but you can see, I mean, it's not even my first knuckle of height. This pile of dirt is actually higher than the, than the um, fence, if I was going to lay it parallel there. So what we're going to do is, this is why I keep even broken step-in posts. You can see this one has broken off. It was old and got snapped off for some reason. Either I ran over it or I, Kelly whacked me with it. It's hard to tell what caused that to break. 
but um, so these come in handy just for this purpose right here so I'm just going to stick that in that first lockdown spot spot and see okay yeah maybe even a little higher I'm hitting stone with that post there we go so that brings it up higher that's about snout high which is where I want them to be and so as they continue to mess around here and eat up some of this vine and these roots slap myself with mud in the face then uh, then this is now going to be a, a logical barrier again so here's a second issue not a huge deal and with a good energizer this isn't going to make that much of a difference but these add up quite a bit over time so as we go around this uh, probably almost a quarter mile worth of fence uh, things like this can add up this time of year all the leaves are falling so we have this hickory uh, this is a hickory leaf a compound leaf has all the different leaves on it it has fallen of course just laid across the fence and is touching the ground when it's dry not a big deal but when you get rain and this is wet then that water makes a good conductor and it grounds it out a little bit so you've losing some of your some of your energy there so along that same line as well we, we've had some a lot of wind here lately so here's just a, looks like a branch out of a maple yep and there's a the maple right there that um, has just fallen and just wedged itself against the fence and another tree so we can just get that out of here toss it back in whatever hmm. <clears throat> I think I see another bigger issue on down the road here let's end up walking away from my side by side and have to walk all the way back to get it but let's take, check this out so these pigs are constantly rooting around and flipping stuff over so what they've done here is just taken this small tree branch and they've just messed around with the root ball and uprooted it but it's caused the limb to come up into the fence so we're just gonna move this oh, there we go get that out of the way clears the fence all right so let's ride the perimeter and see what else we can find hopefully it won't be a lot so this is one of those spots where I had a couple limbs laying across the fence it stretched the fence a little bit so using these nice tensioners I'm gonna go ahead and give her a couple twists so we can tighten it up some take out some of that slack there we go my corner post uh, where am I my corner post here is a peach piece of metal gas pipe um, driven into the ground but I've hit solid stone so it can't be as deep as I'd like it to be so we may have to come back and brace that up riding along here's a, a clear and obvious issue that we have it amazes me so you can see here is my fence wire had a bunch of leaves on it and buried I am amazed that the boars didn't cross over that but you know that the fence still has a still has a uh, shock to it even being buried and the uh, pigs still have an incredible respect of course they probably didn't want to jump over this walnut log either but let's figure out what this is all about okay so here's our culprit so this post is a corner post it's actually sunk very deep and this is one of my little corner turnbuckles and using some of that 17 gauge wire even doubled up it has come undone did it come undone yeah so I had a twist in that or it's broke I think it was a twist it's come loose so it's not as bad as I thought but the issue is what stretched this out it's not that the boars have rubbed ru shot against it because um, that would make sense it's hot this usually is indicative of whitetail whitetail deer come busting through here something gets them stirred up uh, behind the camera is a pretty steep hill so they've come ripping down this mountain and not seen this uh, fence here and have hit it at full speed and that's why I love that's why I've switched to 14 gauge wire it doesn't break the wire it if anything it breaks insulators it breaks the posts off of using step-in posts uh, in this situation obviously it took out my twist so I don't have a lot of repair work to do here I just simply need to get this twist back on there 
Now the real trick will be to uh, get enough tension without having to go all the way back and loosen stuff. There we go. Okay. Nope, we're going to replace that. It's too much foolishness to try to straighten out. We're also not going to waste our time with 17 gauge, even though it was doubled up. We're going to go straight to a piece of 14. We'll slide this in here so it doesn't come in contact with our hots. It allows me to get a little bit better tension on it too. All right, that gives me better confidence in that. So my tensioner is all the way down there. So we're going to ride along the fence here, look for any other obstructions, and then do a tensioning on that end. But before we go all the way down, there's a section that divides the two paddocks. I don't know if you can see that white step-in post over there in the woods. That's a divider that goes down the mountain. So we're going to go down it and check, because I think there's some spots where they've um, uprooted some stuff on it. <laughs> so that may be a problem. <laughs> a little uprooting and uh, putting some logs on the fence there. Right in their walkway. That's what it is. This is their path where they walk the perimeter. Here they come. Gotta nose around. Anybody want an acorn? It's already started to sprout. You want an acorn? Let me stick it in your nose. You want it there, Red? Napoleon? You little jerk. For those of you wondering, the Boar Corral bridge is still holding up well. They're using it like crazy. In fact, we're going to have to get in here and get some mud off of it to keep it from rotting out. But uh, soon we'll be building our roof over top of it to give them some shelter since it's getting colder. Right, boys? Well, we've come full circle and didn't have to do any major repairs. Just a couple, couple places there that you saw. No chainsaw work needed. So I'm not going to bore you all with me running all the way back down, plugging the charger back in, and we're going to do a test here on the most extreme end to see what our, our voltage is. So let's put our fence tester on here and see what we're getting. This is the back side of the loop. In fact, well, actually, it's not a loop. It terminates right here. The back side of the corral does not continue. So this should be the weakest portion. This is the furthest distance you know, for the electric to travel. From the energizer so let's see what we're getting here so i'm getting 5.8 kilovolts which isn't bad um, i know in my experience three is the minimum to keep pigs in so we're well over that minimum i think we'll be fine you know the boars have not been out uh, they're too busy humping one another so that's why they can't go out they don't venture out anywhere <laughs> That, my friends, is proof that the fence is hot. So you can see by our setup, we absolutely love running pigs in the woods. That's all we really have, you know, on 100 acres. It's pretty much 95% of it. So it works out well for us, but you can see some of the obstacles we run into, some of the uh, maintenance elements that come into play with the topography, things getting pushed over on it, uh, limbs falling, uh, whitetail blasting through it, all those type of things. So it requires me to, to check it on a regular basis. Five kilovolts will do the work we want it to do and should keep the boars exactly where they are. Even though I've got a sow in heat right now, about 200 yards away, they're too busy, too busy romancing one another. No, they're, <laughs> they're obviously picking up on that scent, but still not busting through the fence. They have a, a, a very good respect for it. Well, I hope you all stick around. We'll do some more pig videos upcoming. All right, take care.